Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back to the final lecture of chapter six where I'm going to talk about the problems at the end of the chapter. Okay, often when you're faced with a set of problems, it's often good to step back and think about some general issues that may be common to all the problems. So I've uh, listed a few bullet points at the very beginning that I think it would be good for you to consider and read and ponder a bit before starting on the problems. Okay, part, problem one is the exact same inclined plane problem I discussed in the chapter, except there is a frictional force acting in the opposite direction. Okay, so you should still use um, E1 and E2 as coordinates. I mean, you don't have to. You can use any coordinates you want, but I think those are the most convenient. And the only difference is you have uh, a frictional force which is proportional to the normal force in uh, acting in the direction opposite to motion. Okay. And you're supposed to compute the standard things, acceleration, velocity, and distance traveled as a function of time. All right, this looks like the projectile problem we had in the, um, in the chapter. It is, except I have given you a wrinkle by sticking an inclined plane in here, inclined with respect to the angle alpha, alpha with respect to the horizontal, and we're going to launch a projectile at an angle beta with respect to the horizontal. And beta be better be bigger than alpha. You can play a lot play around with beta and alpha it's once you get the expressions that you need. So what I want you to figure out is how far is this particle going to travel before it hits the plane, the range up the plane? Okay, so that's a fun problem. All right, now problem three, a particle moving in a horizontal line. It's, it starts at the origin and it's given an initial velocity, v naught at time zero, everything is moving in a line, but it has a friction force, F, which is proportional to the normal force, acting in the direction opposite of motion. So it's gonna slow down. So at some point it's gonna stop and I want you to examine the distance and the, the expression for the distance when it stops and the velocity and find out what the coefficient of friction is. Remember mu, uh, um, frictional force is empirically is mu times a normal force and show that it has this form right here. V naught squared over 2g x naught. And then think about how this would change with friction as x naught goes to zero. It doesn't, um, doesn't go very far, does it? Must be a lot of friction. V naught goes to zero. Well, it can't go very far. It's not moving. Anyway, fun to play with these uh, these um, limits. Always play with the parameters and the initial conditions to kind of get a feel for what's happening. Okay, problem four. We have another projectile problem. All right, so let's look at the picture behind this. Ah, projectile problem, except after a horizontal distance d, the horizontal drops off to a distance h. Now, good, 
setup is going to be the same. I want you to compute the time it takes the projectile to reach the vertical distance h below the launch point. So you launch it. It must travel at least a distance d horizontally before it. And so you need to have uh, alpha and the uh, horizontal velocity such that it's going to move past the ledge and then it can continue to fall down. All right, I think I skipped a problem. But that was important. Yeah. Problem four. This is a setup for the next problem. And just and, it, and it's just to have you think about what the coordinates mean. You know, if you throw a particle up in this air and it comes down and you want to compute when it hits the earth, that's if the if the origin of the coordinates is z equals zero. But the equations can have solutions for any value of z negative. Keeps, it could keep going, but the ground stops it. Anyway, OK, so there's problem six. Another projectile problem with a little wrinkle. I put a wall at the very end. So what I want you to look at, and so the wall is a distance um, lowercase d away, and I want you to, and its projectile is launched at an angle alpha with, an, with a velocity v naught. Now you can see there's a lot of things going on. If d is really, if the wall is far away, d is large, if you launch it with a small alpha, small v naught, it's just going to go up and down and not hit the wall. So I want to optimize there's a lot of things to optimize. Uh, how far away the wall is versus alpha and, and the um, initial condition. I want you to compute the time that it takes a projectile to hit the wall. Just hit the wall. And that's going to depend on the parameters. Show that a necessary condition for a particle to hit the wall at a, at a specific height, uppercase t, would be for d to be smaller than this particular value. And then I want you to take some numbers. We don't do that very often in this course. And with these numbers fixed, find the value of d so that it, it hits uh, 10 meters above. OK. So these problems will really make you think about how you use the expressions for velocity as a function of time and uh, position as a function of time. OK, that's the end of this chapter. Chap Next time, we're going to start with chapter 7, work and power. And work is going to be um, a big deal in the rest of the course. And it's, that's, this is where we're going to use all those line integrals, learn how to compute line how to use the line integrals and compute them in different situations. So that's it for now. See you next time.